welcome back to the garage. Today, I wanted to give you a closer look at the newest addition to the channel. Now this is my 1959 International Full Wheel Drive. Now before I forget, like I'm prone to do, if you would please go ahead and check out my buddies at Central Oregon Shenanigans and the Fox Shop. Both of their channels will be linked in the video description below. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe to them and show them some love. Just do me a favor and drop down their comment section. Tell them Zane sent you. Now this is my 1959 International Full Wheel Drive truck. In the last video that I done when I went and got this truck, I actually thought it was a BC 160. Turns out this truck is actually an AC 170. This model of truck was only sold in all wheel drive. Now, this one is four-wheel drive, but they actually made versions that were six-wheel drive. And I'll actually show you a picture from an old brochure. I'll throw that up on the screen and show you how tough these trucks look six-wheel drive. Now, the body on this truck, amazingly, is in pretty good shape, other than the roof panel and this front dent that's up by the radiator. I can only assume that somebody was pushing this around with a forklift and ran a fork in here because it looks like the damage is flat and pretty wide. So it's kind of amazing that it missed the headlight ring here because I imagine that's even harder to find than probably the fender. But the front of the truck's in good shape. The radiator doesn't look like it leaks anything. The bars are not bent. Nothing's really tore up up front. The front bumper, like I mentioned in another video, has never had a winch on the inside of it. There's no holes, there's no bracketry that looks like has ever been cut off of this. I think they just had this bumper nice and heavy in case they ever needed to pull the truck out or to probably push a tree over. It's got a old bracket up here for holding a water jug for a crew of guys. We'll go down the side here, I'll show you a little bit more. You can see the big majority of the reason why I even bought this truck is because it has factory lockouts that are on this. They do spin freely and this truck rolls nicely. You see this fender's had a little bit of work done to it. The sad part about the body is, as you can see, maybe it'll pick it up in the camera, maybe not, but there's orbital marks in here from where someone looks like they sanded this truck down and went to paint it, never did, and just rolled it outside, so that's where all the rust came from. I really like these little inlays, the chrome's peeling off of them, but I might check and see once this project gets further along. There's a local plating shop close to me, might take them off and see what they would charge to actually plate them. Let me open up the door again. This side's not bad. The hinge needs a little bit of work. It's missing the door panel on the inside of the door. Now, like I mentioned before, the floorboards do not seem bad at all in this truck, really. I mean, there's a patch here that's been worked on, but any place that's flat, even an amateur welder can fix up and make look nice. I really like that speedometer, the way it sits up there on the dash. You can see the uh, transmission hump that actually covers the rear half of the engine. And we'll go over that in a little bit more detail further on in this video. But let me step up, if I don't fall, and show you how bad the roof actually is on this old truck. And there you can see the damage. I think this is an old battery tray, like a floorboard battery tray for an old truck that somebody's flattened out and put over a rust hole and didn't really help out did it but like i said luckily the uh, lodestar international trucks share the same roof and down in between the pinch weld you can't really see them now but you can drill the spot welds out and i can put another skin on this truck fairly easy kind of another interesting uh, part of this truck got two big chrome strips on either side of the seat this was a fairly fancy model, like I said, and they only actually made this body style for about two and a half years. Let me shut this door. Now, if you're like me, you're probably just as surprised. I myself have never seen a two-ton truck, an old one like this, with a sliding back glass. Now, I thought at first that this was taken out of a newer truck and just kind of adapted in here, but you might be able to see there's no actual cuts on this frame that would make you think that they tried to shrink it to fit it inside of this older cab on this truck. Now that's very unusual. 
It's hard to find any information on this model of truck to begin with, and uh, sliding back glass, I've not seen a single one in the actual pictures of the AC-170s that I've seen online. And I've only actually seen two pictures of these trucks, one being from that brochure that I actually showed you. But this old truck has hydraulic brakes on it, and I guess this is a Hydrovac system. A lot of older Fords use this. There's this uh, canister down on the side of the frame that creates the vacuum for the brakes. These were notorious for being horrible systems. So when I get this truck up and running, I'll have to just probably convert it over to Hydro Boost, which I have no problem doing. The cab mounts on this truck are pretty neat. Used to have a Lodestar dump truck here at the house, and it didn't have this, it's almost like a semi truck style cab mount, where it's got a big thick rubber bushing in there. And this actually takes up the dampening force of the cab going up and down. So that's kind of interesting. Got a little bit of rust here on the seam of the cab, which can still be repaired. You can see the transfer case down in there. I'm sorry, the transmission down in there. The short drive shaft that runs back here to the transfer case. Now somebody has added this little swivel for the PTO, I guess to run an auger or something on the back. This is definitely not look factory. This bracket that's kind of put in here crooked but you can see over the years this truck has had numerous numerous repairs inside of the frame now I don't know if this truck had been lengthened at one time and then shortened again or what's going on but this is a little uh, a little over 3 8 thick steel on the inside the outside has a little bit thicker steel as well double framed you can see where there was a bracket probably for that old bed that was cut out of here but here's the plate added on the outside of the frame now this doesn't really bother me this was common practice back in the day and still to this day of cutting or shortening or lengthening a truck like that so as long as it was done right which the welds don't look too bad I'm not really concerned with go back here and show you the rear end and the drive shaft was cut by the guy that I got it from just so he could tow it with his truck. Guy was in pretty bad health, couldn't really move around at all, so he admitted to me that he cut that drive shaft instead of laying down on the ground and unbolting it. But I will show you. He actually found me before I left the piece that goes in there so I can easily have a drive shaft shop fix that drive shaft up for me. Now the passenger side of the truck is actually in pretty good shape as well, except for this rocker and step. Now I'll get down here and show you, this rocker is actually not rusted out at all, but I believe the welds are broke back here because you can see the inside is actually sitting a little bit lower. And when I step on the back part of this step, yeah, it's almost falling off of the truck. So I really need to keep that in the back of my mind when I'm cleaning this truck out, not to step on there and fall and uh, hurt myself. Now the all-wheel drive emblem for this side sadly is broken. I have seen a few on eBay so I can find a replacement. It just would have been nice to have had the original one. And speaking about the badges, both of the international ones are here which is awesome, but the ones that would have said AC 170 are missing and I cannot find any replacements on those. So it's just a real big bummer that somebody robbed both of those off of this truck. Now, with the lawnmower fuel tank sitting in here, you can only guess what I'm trying to do. I'm kind of shooting these videos out of order, but I'm trying to get this old truck running. No spoilers on that. I just wanted to get up here and show you the engine that is in this truck. This is what I believe to be a 308 cubic inch six-cylinder blue diamond international engine now for this model of truck which is kind of uh, very weird is they normally put in this year of truck a black diamond international engine and for some reason in the AC model they reverted back to the older engine I guess because it had a little bit more power for these uh, all-wheel drive trucks but you can see I mean it is very tight quarters in here you can only actually get to on the passenger I'm sorry the driver's side the first four cylinders and the first four spark plugs which means I have to take that transmission hump that I was talking about earlier out of the floor clean up the interior just so I can get to the back two cylinders and put new plugs and wires on it 
Now I would have showed you the driver's side, but with the battery sitting in there and the hood up, you can barely fit in there to actually even work on this engine. It's very crammed and the video that I'm doing for the Will It Run hopefully won't suffer on horrible camera angles, but no promises. One other thing I wanted to go over on the interior of this truck is that this is a five-speed manual transmission in the truck and you can also see the four-wheel drive shifter down there. One other very odd part about this interior is there is no glove box on this truck at all. I know some internationals just use the little coin tray or the ashtray up here and some of them actually do have glove boxes but for some reason this model wasn't offered with one I guess. You see these old gauges? Another view of that speedometer. I really hope that I can get that speedometer to work and them gauges underneath of it. The temperature gauge, the generator, the oil light, and the uh, fuel gauge down there. Now last but not least on this walk around, let's go ahead and take a look at the front axle that's under this truck. Now you can see how old school this is. From what I can tell without cleaning it off, I believe this is a Timken front axle. Now what's neat about this is it almost looks like a quick change rear end from like an old hot rod. You can see that there's a truss that goes underneath this axle. And it actually had some really weird looking rubber boots that went around the ends of the axle, I guess, to keep debris out of going inside of the U-joint area. But there isn't any damage on this front end. And hopefully when I get the truck running, I'll throw this thing at four wheel drive and uh, see what it's capable of. As always, thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch my videos. It truly means a lot. I really hope that you enjoyed the walk around and the close up of the old International 2 ton four wheel drive. I think the next video on that truck is going to be a story time video on how I ran across that truck, what I paid for it, and what I think it's worth. But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment or a question down below, consider subscribing if this is the kind of content that you're into. And just a friendly reminder that it doesn't matter if you're working on your project in a garage or in your driveway. What matters is that you go out there, you do the job yourself, and you learn more about your project. Whatever that project may be. Now that this video is over, I'm about to go outside and work on something. My name is Zane, and I'll catch you next time.